Good afternoon, everyone. Let me welcome those of you present in the room and also online to this press conference about uh, Corporate Sustainability Due Diligence uh, Directive, which has just been voted uh, and adopted in the plenary. Uh, my name is Martina Vash. I'm following a uh, uh, jury committee or legal affairs committee in the European Parliament. Uh, let me welcome the rapporteur of the file, uh, Lara Walters, um, and uh, she will brief us shortly about the Parliament's uh, position uh, before the interinstitutional negotiations. Uh, before I give the floor to the rapporteur, let me just uh, give you some uh, remarks about the organization. After the initial statement by the rapporteur, we'll give the floor to you to ask your questions. Uh, please state your name and the organization uh, you, you represent or the media you represent. And, um, and uh, I, if you are online, then please uh, press the speak button. So now let me pass the floor to the rapporteur, uh, Lara Walters. Thank you very much, and thank you for being here. Um, I feel like I am a little bit talked out <laughs> about due diligence, to be honest, after what has been quite a um, moved week. I don't know if that's a word even, but after a very eventful week and after um, days with a lot of uncertainty, uh, on uh, what some of my colleagues here in this parliament were going to do. So I, uh, I hope that you will allow me a, uh, a little bit of, of slack uh, in, in these remarks um, after the, the emotional roller coaster that was, uh, that was, that was the vote uh, and, uh, and, and what led up to it. Um, but ahead of that period, um, the uh, cooperation between the groups and uh, my colleagues Manon Aubry and Heidi Houtel are present here, um, but between the groups um, that are progressive but also Renew and EPP was um, very good, it was very constructive and the deal that we struck together was one that was very broadly uh, carried. Um, I will say some more about that maybe in a, in a, in a moment. Um, but uh, I have said before that I obviously am very pleased at the, the outcome of the vote today. I'm very happy that we stuck together as a, as a parliament, that we got this over the line, and that, that despite um, some last, last minute maneuvering, uh, that the sensible center of this parliament uh, got its landmark due diligence position. Um, I've said before also that I think this is this is more than um, responsible business. This is hugely important for people. This is hugely important for workers in the EU, outside of the EU, but it's also important for the EU because it says something about how we see globalization, how we see trade, how we see sustainability, and whether or not we are willing to put our money where our mouth is. And that's why, um, for me, this project was too big to fail, and I, I, I'm pleased that colleagues in their voting behavior agreed on, on that. Um, it's not a secret either that this has been a flagship initiative for the S&D group, that in our group we had many of the rapporteur positions in the opinion giving committees. This has really been a, a remarkable fight with so, so many people involved. Um, and for the S&D in particular, although I'm, I'm sure it's, it's the same for my, my progressive colleagues present here today, what's, what's so important is, um, that part of this uh, part of this law or part of this position that we'll now negotiate on with the council, there's access to justice for victims. There's an obligation for companies to remediate harm. There's uh, climate and, and, and transition plans that are in line with the Paris Agreement that are obligatory. There's sanctions. There's liability. Um, and what that means is that this is a a serious law. This is not a um, nice to have for companies. This is no longer um, a, a, uh, a corporate social responsibility type of project that we ask companies to put in place that is, that is voluntary. This is now serious business, and I'm, I'm very pleased that that's what we got over the line. I'll, I'll maybe leave it there, because I want to make sure there's time for, uh, for questions. Um, yeah, no, I'll leave it there. So please, if you have a question, yes, please. Hi, you can hear me, right? Lea Marshall from Agence Europe. Um, could you um, could you confirm that the reason why uh, you needed a, a small moment before the final vote 
um, was due to the amendment uh, 391 on <laughs> directors' responsibilities, <laughs> because I, I think I understood it like that, but I'm not sure, or if there was something else. And could you explain how much of a change uh, is that, the, the removal of that article, and how you feel about, uh, about it? Thank you. About that. Um, no, we just did it for a little bit of extra drama. We thought there wasn't quite enough drama in, uh, in the vote. So it was just for fun. No, it wasn't for fun. We had agreed with um, the Greens and with the left groups that no matter what happened, we would take a break. And the reason for this was that there were so many issues of vital importance to us that had been amended on by the EPP and by Renew. Um, as you will have seen, there were 50 amendments, uh, and all of, almost all of them were very destructive. And what that meant was that the, the, uh, the analysis that we had to do beforehand on what ifs was quite complicated to make, um, because so many things that were important were, were being put to a, to a vote. So we had said, no matter what happens, we'll take a break. Of course, in the moment, um, yes, the, 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 the concrete issue at hand was the, um, was the situation around uh, Article 26. Um, do I mind that it was voted down? Yes, absolutely. I would have liked to see uh, this being part of our, our text. So that's the, the oversight of due diligence actions um, and reporting to the, to the board. Um, but uh, on the upside, we've got the, the duty of care in Article 25, um, meaning directors need to take into, into account sustainability in their decision making. Um, but so yes, the break was about that. Uh, yes, I mind that it's not there. Um, and your last question was, no, that was it. There we go. I've seen a hand up there. Hi, Koen Verhulst for MLEX. It's uh, on the same topic, of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fact that uh, 25 is in and 26, Article 26 is out, does that compromise your position towards the council, do you think? Do you think that will be easier to, you know, let's say, tell you, well, just get rid of all of this now? Because that <laughs> will be uh, much harder to sort of, the, you know, the consistency is harder to, um, to, to argue for. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, let me maybe say that uh, looking at the 50 amendments that were tabled um, that having lost on uh, on one aspect uh, rather than on 50 of course at the moment makes makes me think that the outcome of our vote today is is good and I'm, I'm very positive on it on this particular aspect would I have preferred to go to council and to trialogues with both articles 25 and 26 in my hand yes um, but the fact that we've got um, a, a general um, duty of care in this directive, I think, means that this is still a political topic on our negotiating agenda, as it should be. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see uh, how we go from there. But of course, I know that the Commission is, is firmly on, on our side as regards this topic, since it's, uh, it's been on the, on the Commission's, in the Commission's proposal all, uh, all along. Thank you. Yes, please. Could you please give us a sense of what the main battlegrounds will be now um, moving forward to next week? Um, I'm not really looking ahead <laughs> to next week yet. Um, if you'll just allow us all a moment to digest um, today's outcome and perhaps have a, a small glass of uh, non-alcoholic uh, champagne in my case. Um, but the main battlegrounds, I think we all know that um, the inclusion of the financial sector will be very important, um, that there the council's position has been um, not in line with the parliaments, to say the least. I also think it's not a, a position that, that uh, provides sufficient clarity. So that will certainly be very important. I'm sure that on liability, we'll have some tough battles to uh, fight. Um, and anything to do for me with liability, access to justice, and, and all those things that, that make a real impact for people affected, um, those will be um, very, very high on the, on the political agenda. And those are not going to be items that we, uh, that we resolve within, uh, within the first trilogue. Can I just uh, say also that uh, I, I just wanted to give a moment to Heidi and to Manon in case they wanted to take the floor, perhaps from where you're sitting, to say a word or two. Um, you're also very welcome to, to come up here, but I, I want to make sure that before the, the translators stop, that uh, 
that you're also able to. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Lara, for this opportunity. We, of course, congratulate Lara for, for the key role that she has played. Uh, I'm sure that we are in this together. Uh, but uh, it's also been a tremendous tra teamwork until now. It will continue. So I do believe that um, on the issue of director's duties, it has been very disputed by even you know, the Nordic countries who are in principle think they are in the front line on, on responsible business conduct, but they hate the idea that there would be some regulation coming from the EU. But we also voted on something else today on economic policy, where a large majority of the parliament said that corporate governance should be aligned with sustainability. And I think this is perhaps something that we as colleagues from the Legal Affairs Committee can take on in the next step. But on this situation, I think we have a very confirming mandate now to start the negotiations with the Council. And I'm very pleased that Article 25 of the Direct duties is there because actually that's I would say as important as 26 <laughs> even on its own uh, maybe one thing I can uh, uh, insist on uh, also praising Lara for the great work she's been doing <laughs> we've been counting we've had more than 120 hours of negotiation all in all uh, so we, we know each other very well uh, <laughs> I can say we're all part of the same family but one thing I can insist on uh, if I may um, because I, before being elected to the parliament, I was working for NGOs, so I'm really seeing the, from the victim side, uh, because I, I've been fighting to, to it. We were telling uh, with Heidi, it was one of the reasons I came to the parliament, so it was, it was quite funny because it's a sort of passage de volée. Um, but um, I think what is really key are the, the articles on access to justice for victims, and that's where uh, I believe the text makes the biggest difference. Uh, for the first time in, in, in the national legal regime, thanks to the EU directive, all victims across the world will be able to take up uh, a, a company to, to, to a European court because they've been violating human rights or um, <coughs> polluting the environment down the supply chain. And although we didn't win on the reversal burden of the proof, it's still groundbreaking uh, that being, you know, uh, peasants uh, in Uganda and Tanzania, being uh, uh, people on, on the construction sites uh, in the World Cup, uh, for the World Cup infrastructures, the 6,500 people were, were, were dead, uh, being the forced labor in China uh, from the, the Uyghur forced labor that some of the uh, companies, especially uh, uh, the clothes companies, are using. All of those victims, they will be able to demand justice. And this is the big difference that the stakes will make. And I believe in a way, you know, will correct a legal gap that existed in EU legal system because just last week, Facebook has been condemned for 1.3 billion of euros because of uh, 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 data, the way they've been handling data. So we can say now that human rights and environments are as protected in the EU law as data protection or as um, uh, company law and I think uh, our competition law. So I think it's very important uh, to insist on that matter, if I may, Lara. Thank you. I will now give the floor uh, to the journalists online because they have been load, uh, waiting for some time. Emanuela, if you can press the speak button, please. Hi. Thank you. So uh, my question is about the um, uh, climate impact and carbon emissions. Well, how will exactly that work and uh, how do you plan to like understand whether or not a company has a certain amount of negative impact on the climate. Thanks. And also, <laughs> sorry, uh, how was actually that, like how different uh, groups in the parliament were divided over this? Thanks. Um, on the last question, I don't know yet because we need to look at the voting list and what happened on the particular vote uh, on Article 15, I believe, um, and elsewhere in the text. But um, in, in general, what we've agreed now is that companies need to introduce ambitious climate plans in line with the Paris Agreement, uh, and that includes scope one, two, and three emissions. Um, and aside from that, companies need to do due diligence on climate impacts 
also in line with the Paris Agreement and any other impact on climate change. And that is groundbreaking. That's the piece that was missing also after the CSRD, so after the report requirements that we introduced. While we said you need to be transparent about what you do um, and uh, you need to be, 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 be open, you need to report on, on climate policies you might have, we did not spell out yet what the actual behavioral requirements were on those aspects, and that's what we're, we're doing here. Um, and I'm very pleased that we're taking that step today and very pleased with this article. We have uh, time for two more questions. One is online, Maud Randy, uh, please press your speak button, and then last question in the room. Maud Randy, you there? No, we can see you, no hear you. Uh, okay, go ahead. Text of uh, this with as amended be available. Could you please repeat your question? When it be available. Yeah, when will the full text of uh, what was passed be available? It was very confusing for many of us following all the amendments. Uh, yeah, I, I can't say that. That's something for the Parliament Services. Um, if anybody in this room is from the Parliament Services involved, then let us know. But I, I would assume that it'll be probably at, at least a week for the English version, probably longer. It takes some time, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Randy. We... Uh, Perhaps someone can take his details so it actually gets sent to him when it's uh, when it's there. Or review the vote online. Yeah, but that's that's not. It's it's true that it's very difficult to follow from the from the outside. Um, that's maybe something on our to do list for a, for a next parliamentary term. Right. So uh, time for last question. Yes, please. Yes, <clears throat> Yann Olivier from uh, AFP Fact Story. Um, what uh, what do you answer to the right uh, the right wing opponents to the law who say that uh, companies uh, will uh, European companies after this law will uh, leave uh, the ground for Chinese companies in developing countries uh, because they will have uh, too many obligations so and uh, would uh, China give China the floor basically what do you answer to them thank you so. My, my answer to those who say that European companies would now leave to, to China, um, because the, the answer there is um, we have now said very clearly in the parliament that it's our European market, our rules, and those rules are for European companies if they want to do business in China, i.e. Um, European companies that might, through their value chains, have some involvement or be linked to forced labor need to now do something about that. But it also works the other way around for Chinese companies wanting to put their products or services onto the European market. They can no longer do that if they don't have due diligence policies in place. And that's a very important aspect of this. And that is why when we talk about a level playing field, we're not only talking about a level playing field between 27 member states, we're talking about a level playing field globally. And that level playing field, I think, is clear from what we've done. And to me, counters the arguments of we are playing into the hands of those now um, that make business models out of cutting corners. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rapporteur. Thank you very much uh, to all of you for participation at this press conference, and I wish you all a wonderful uh, afternoon. Thank you.